Alright you guys, in today's video I'm going to be answering a question, I guess a few questions that I get uh, pretty often. Questions like, how do I trade? What are the price of cards worth? How do I get into Yu-Gi-Oh? How do I buy cards? Etc, etc. Um, I'm going to be answering those questions, and I'm going to be answering those questions for you today in a unique way. Shoutouts to Adam. Once again, he's the one who sent me this magazine, as well as many other magazines, to show off uh, for you guys in another video. But there's a section of this magazine that I'm going to be using to answer those questions, because this is some wisdom from way back in 2007, from this Pojo's unofficial Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy magazine. If you guys want the full experience of these magazines, you know, seeing every single page, page and uh, you know all of its nostalgic glory you know relive your childhood a little bit or what have you maybe just get a glimpse into Yu-Gi-Oh history I got you covered in other videos I'll have a card for those up on your screen right now um, for this video once again I just want to go to this specific part of the magazine tips for trading and collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards getting the most bang for your buck all right and this is written by Michael Lucas like back in 2007 guys Let's just get into it. There are a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards out there. Thousands upon thousands of different cards are available to collectors and players alike. To younger or newer players, getting enough cards or the right cards to play can be a tough task. And that's what we're going to be addressing in this video. But there are some things you can do to get good cards, keep a good collection, and generally be an easier person to trade with. So here are a few tips that will help you to reach that point. And this first one is very, very important because this, I mean, this is how, this first tip is how I got the bulk of my collection, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Buy in bulk, tip number one. With many things in the world, if you buy more of something at one time, it ends up costing less if you were to buy the items one at a time. Buying a box of cards, which usually costs around 60 to 70 for a new set, sure beats buying 24 packs at four bucks each which would be about 96 dollars <laughs> it says here so instead of buying a pack or two every time you go to the store save up and get a box when you have enough money fair enough right not only will you get more cards but you'll get at least a few foil cards and it's especially these days uh, starting with uh, breakers of shadow you get a guaranteed super rare in every single pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards these days if you buy one or two packs at a time you could get unlucky unlucky and pull no foils that is true especially because some uh, Yu-Gi-Oh boxes like breakers of shadow I just mentioned are no notoriously mapped to where you can everybody knows where the secret rares are and you can just reach into those boxes and pull out the, the packs with the secret rares. Notorious um, stacking error or whatever it's called in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! History Breakers of Shadow. There's been multiple others though. That's just uh, the biggest one I can remember off the top of my head right now. But this holds up. Buy boxes if you're going to buy. But the main thing, and this is how I, like I started to talk about how I got the bulk of my collection. I bought out other people's collections from them when they were getting out of the game. Um, this has happened several times. My first big uh, bulk buyout, I didn't even buy it. It was from an old friend of mine, Mitchell, who uh, I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! with um, in, uh, after high school. And he just gave me his whole collection. The, the tens you guys see on this channel and everything else just gave them to me. He, he was like, you're getting into the game. I'm getting out of the game. You know, you and your friends seem really passionate about it. I want you to have all my stuff. And I was like, are you sure? And he was, he was sure. He even drove it over to my house and just gave it to me. Tens and all. And then uh, we actually happened to work together at the time. And this was uh, when uh, the company was HP. Um, I worked for HP at the time. Um, we both did. And um, I met him up I met up with him at work. It was like, hey, you know those cards you just gave me? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, some of those are worth, like, a lot of money. And he was like, oh, oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. And so I was like, he goes, well, I already gave him to you. And I was like, dude, I'm talking. I barely looked and I already came across at least one, you know, at least one $100 card and some other stuff, you know? And he's like, you know what? I, I would take some money for you for those cards, you know, because I offered him some money. I was like, are you, are you sure? You know, uh, I would give you like, you know, a hundred bucks at least because I've already found, you know, a hundred dollar card in here. And uh, he took it, you know, at that time, I, maybe it was $50. Uh, either way, I did pay him for his collection, even though he told me I didn't have to because, well, he just gave me, uh, I mean, really what makes up my collection to this day. You know, uh, cards from just about every set from like LOB, I mean, the tournament packs and all kinds of stuff going up and until whenever he quit, you know, I don't remember what, I mean, I, I don't know, like, uh, 
after 2010, you know, so there's a uh, Dark World cards, I don't know, all kinds of stuff, you know, I got just all kinds of just, I can't even tell you everything I got. And since then, I have bought um, at least uh, two other people out of their collections. Not as big as that first initial collection I was just mentioning, but um, I bought people out of their collections, and that, in my opinion, is the best way to get cards, especially if they need the money. Um, the other two people I bought cards from were going off to college, really needed the cash, I had the cash, bought their whole collections, got a fuck ton of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And, that, and that's how I did it, you know? And you can still do the same on eBay to this day. Go out and uh, find somebody who's got just a large bulk collection, go buy it, you know? Um, if the price is right. Um, and that's, that's, that's the, our next point here. So, know what your cards are worth in general. Trading cards by their rarity is a good idea, but this isn't always the case. Some super rares are worth $2 and others $35. Ain't that the truth? Especially now with, once again, a super rare being guaranteed in every pack, the super rares aren't worth as much as uh, they used to be, you know? <laughs> there are even uh, normal rare cards like Dark Beginnings 2 <laughs> Morphing Jar that are worth more than even the secret rares from older sets. And that is, that's a possibility. That is a, a very real possibility. Um, for, for example, um, uh, oh, oh, what's the set? Star Strike Blast. Star Strike Blast. Vanity's empty, emptiness from Star Strike Blast because Star Strike Blast has only had one print. It doesn't doesn't have an unlimited edition. You can only find first dead Star Strike Blast cards. Comments from that set, one particular Vanity's Emptiness, became worth a lot of money. I think Vanity's Emptiness might have gotten close to a hundred dollars a pop at one point. It was over fifty bucks for sure uh, for a common. For a common, yeah, that, that stuff that stuff happens. With prices being very low on some cards and high on others, a recent price guide would be a good thing to pick up. Or these days, just go to TCG Player, uh, or if you prefer, I don't know, eBay, Amazon, it doesn't matter, but everybody uses TCG Player these days. And that's where you go to look up the price of cards. And if you and if it's a really old card, a uh, more obscure card, you kind of have to go to eBay or uh, other online price guides to evaluate. But those are for, you know, like, champion like like championship cards like uh shonen jump cards <laughs> you know what i mean and stuff like that uh, uh prize cards and whatnot that's usually what you have to go to like a forum for as far as a price guide like every other card in the game basically you can go to tcg player and get an accurate you know uh price listing and this next part really cracks me up for those of you with internet access <laughs> <laughs> this is back when you know you gathered information from the internet and the you know the internet didn't gather every you know bit of information from you I guess even then it did but <laughs> anyways for those of you with internet access everybody's got a phone in their pocket now you can check out the popular shopping sites to see what your cards are selling for you don't need to buy anything to look up names of cards and see what people are selling them for a minute or two of comparing prices can make sure you don't accidentally trade a $30 card for a $3 one ain't that the truth just check your check your uh, card prices online and make sure to take uh, the condition of cards into account because the condition of cards is very very important uh, would you want to spend um, you know $50 for a $50 card that is beat to shit or $50 for a $50 card that is in great condition and looks like it was never it has never been played I think everyone's gonna want the crisp mint condition card, so uh, yeah, make make sure to uh, check uh, you know a condition as well, and when uh, determining prices and stuff. But that should be uh, common sense. Moving on, sort your collection. I've been shown a lot of trade binders by a lot of players. Some have been sorted so well that even without seeing the binder before, I knew exactly where to look to check if the player had the card I needed. Others had cards spread out so far, I had to flip through over a hundred pages of cards to see if there's anything I wanted uh, to trade. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna move on here. My advice is to pick a method of sorting your cards and stick with it. Usually it's best to take all the cards of a certain rarity all ultra rares, then all super rares, then all rares, and sort them by name, each in their own section of your binder. He's talking about doing it alphabetically. That would take forever. I don't even do that. I'll show you guys what I do in a minute. <laughs> this will uh, help people find what they're looking for quickly when trading with you, and it will help you find what you're looking for when you want to take a card out for your deck. Yeah, and that is that is very true. So let's set this over here for now, and I'll show you guys how I organize my stuff, uh, starting with my commons. I don't organize my commons like monsters, spells, traps, uh, or alphabetically, that would take forever. But what I did do was take any decent common out of my bulk and put them in binders, okay? Any decent common. 
This front page should say it all. Deck lockdown. <laughs> this is Droll and Lockbird, you know what I mean? This is mistake. Uh, uh, the, the prohibitions. Uh, I, I mean, anything, anything. Like, Flute of Summoning Creepo. Like, like, any common Fire King Island. You know, that was relevant in a format. You know, that was in Cosmo format. Uh, but you get it. Uh, all these cards are going to be, will be recognizable. They're going to be relevant to, this card's relevant to this day if you're playing zombies, for example. The point is, instead of going through all of my bulk, going through all of my tins, uh, all of my, you know, product boxes, that I keep cards in, etc., etc., etc. I know that if there's a common worth a shit, it is in one of my common binders. I do not miss the days of looking through my tens forever to find just one card that I needed. I, I do not miss that. Now, something I should do and could do is put like all the Unizombies together and stuff because we've already passed several. Um, you know, we've already passed Grand Moles and crap like that. Other cards I've put together. So there's still some organization that could be done, but uh, yeah, you find the time. <laughs> if, you, if you guys have time to come sort my bulk, Come do it. Come come sort my cards for me. Come come on. Come sort it for me. <laughs> you know? Now, uh, my, my foils I have uh, sorted a little bit better. All right. Um, this is one of mine that I use for effect monsters. Okay. This is one of my uh, binders I use for effect monsters. Um, there's starting with, uh, you know, there's the god cards. There's cyber jar. Uh, looks like I took a play set of cards out of here. There's my play set of gores. So you see, like, uh, this is just my effect monster binder. Um, I don't really, I don't have any spells in here, except, that, I mean, you, you can count pendulum monsters as spells, I guess. So, you know, and I have I have those in here. Sure, 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 sure. But, um, yeah, these are just all, um, this is my effect monster binder. And uh, you get it. This is just... For effect monsters, there's not really a whole lot else to, to say about it, you know, it's just got a bunch of crap in here. And that's how I organize my stuff. I have another binder with a sp oh, that's all spells, I have another binder that's all traps, and this one is identical to the last binder I pulled out, where it's got all of my extra deck monsters. Starting with Lynx, uh, going all the way into Xyz, um, I have uh, multiple cards that I have in different rarities, like right here, like Dark Rebellion, I have the First Dead Secret from New Challengers, and I have the uh, First Dead uh, Ghost from New Challengers. Keep them together. Keep, I keep light cards together when I notice them. Here's my Lavalvel Chains. Rip Lavalvel Chain that needs to come back. Uh, I don't know, my spare Cyber Dragon Infinities and stuff. I even have a spare uh, German Secret one, which is pretty dope. I have a number 62 Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon, an Ultra, and an Ulti. Uh, you get it. Just, uh, this is my, uh, my extra deck collection. Um, going into fusion monsters, you know, I got synchros in here. You understand, uh, this is how I organize my stuff. I don't do it alphabetically. That would take forever. If you guys have the patience to sort your stuff alphabetically and by monster spells, traps, all this stuff, good on you, good for you, whatever. I, <laughs> I don't have my stuff that well organized. I do have it separated between, you know, good stuff and you know not as good stuff the not as good stuff stays you know uh in my tins or gets put up on the wall you know i uh, have a lot of commons up here that aren't necessarily the best there's some up here that i have such an abundance of they might be decent cards but once again i have such an abundance of them they can go on the wall i don't, <laughs> I don't really care that much next up this magazine discusses special collections so let's uh, get into that for collecting i leave with this one last idea most players tend to have a favorite card and collect as many copies or different versions of it as they can. <laughs> that is true. I myself have a lot of Dark Magicians and a lot of uh, Blue Eyes White Dragons. I'm sure you guys are the same way or a lot of other people are the same way. I actually uh, know a guy who was a judge, um, used to go to the card shop with him a long time ago. Um, he collected Blue Eyes White Dragons and he, actually, to my knowledge, has the biggest collection of Blue Eyes. I mean, it's the biggest collection of Blue Eyes I've ever seen in my life. So, yeah. <laughs> this is usually a good thing. Yeah, like, especially if you have a bunch of LOB blue eyes or, you know, DDS blue eyes and stuff, that'd be dope because those are worth a lot of money, you know? Especially if the card isn't widely wanted by a lot of other players. Having five full pages in a trade binder of your favorite card is impressive by any standards and fun to show off to others. If nothing else, it'll give you a sense of accomplishment when you get your 10th, 20th, 50th, or even 100th copy of a card. My Red Eyes, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician collection's not the most impressive. It's just what I had in my bulk and I put them, you know, in the back of the uh, normal monster uh, section of this binder, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it's not that impressive. I just thought I would, you know, show it off and then get some of the rest of the Dark Magicians I have and then I got some extra spare junk in the back here. That's not, you know, it's organized back there because I needed space for it to where I, uh, remember uh, where it was, like drolls, you know, drolls are, I don't want to look through all my uh, good common binders for drolls when I, they're a card that can go in a, a more competitive binder. 
So that's why the drawers are in there. Another uh, special collection I have is this right here, which is all my OCG cards. Uh, this is probably my favorite one of this one, the Summit Skull. I love the Summit Skull because the Summit Skull, the Ultra Summit Skull Anniversary Summit Skull right here. Um, I have this in English too, and it reminds me of the Bandai Summit Skull. The artwork of it, you know, uh, makes me uh, think of the Bandai Summit Skull, and it's so dope. Um, so the yeah, this, those are my favorites. Uh, some of my favorite OCG cards that I own. Um, all these cards are, I don't know, they're, they're, they're you know, sentimental, sentimental to me. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, I can't think of, I can't point out hardly any of these cards um, that haven't been sent by fans. So that's a, a big part of, <laughs> of what makes this uh, collection right here uh, sentimental to me. Um, along with, uh, you know, I don't know, fan-made cards and uh, other stuff I've gotten. Oh, I have a Japanese Sasuke. That's cool. I did not know that. That's cool. That's cool stuff for GOAT format. Um, and GOAT format, uh, you know, people play Japanese cards because it's goats like it's cool like we all know what the cards do <laughs> the format's been around 100 years <laughs> you know like yeah uh, it's it's really fun and this is another one of my favorites this is this one was sent to me by a fan uh, saying like spot the fake card and this one i was like this one's the one you want me to think is fake and it's actually real huh and i was and i was correct uh this one right here is uh, a, a card that looks like it might be fake, but it's just really, really, really old because it doesn't have like the box down here in the corner and stuff, but it's just a really old Japanese card. Some of these cards I should probably sleeve. <laughs> But um, yeah, just you get it. Here's my uh, Japanese collection. Um, there's another one of my favorites I have is a uh, you know tune table. I wish I had like tournament pack tune tables. That'd be so dope. It looks like I have some room back here for more Japanese, Korean, and you know Chinese cards. This is where I keep the OCG cards. You know this one's Korean. Uh, yeah, just keep them all in here. But basically, any card I can't read that's not TCG, uh, the uh, German uh, cards I can't read. You know, and I keep them with the TCG stuff because. The TCG cards, I can play them in tournaments. I can't play OCG cards, you know, tournaments and stuff. Now, you can even, in the case of, I don't know, GOAT format here, organize your cards by formats. Now, I, this, once again, is not, uh, you know, sorted by rarity. This is not sorted by, uh, uh, it's, not alpha, it's not alphabetized, but this is sorted by format. This, these right here are all cards that are legal for GOATs. I keep them. Um, and, and two binders. I have another goat binder over here. I'll just you know flip through one though But um, I keep these all together because I will give out uh, Free uh, goat cards to people that want to learn That's why I keep all these uh, together and why I have so many just stacked in here And this, this isn't even all of them guys I have tens filled with goat cards that I can't even fit in these binders like I don't know think about every time compulsory evacuation device has been printed or called the haunted or Dust Tornado, you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of goat cards that have been printed to shit like a thousand times that I have a lot of, and I just, I mean, some of them are in here, but I keep, you know, for easy access, but others I keep in um, a tin of their own. Um, but you understand, uh, this is, if, I, if I need uh, to look for cards that, for goat format, I uh, flip through these. Uh, some of these are, you know, higher rarity than others. These are Hobby League, Hobby League Knox. Uh, I do have some uh, uh, max rarity goat stuff or, and high rarity goat stuff, uh, don't get me wrong, but most of it's just common. It's not that impressive. It's just uh, separated um, by format so that uh, I can locate cards when I need to. Hopefully these tips will help some newer players avoid some of the common mistakes that most players make when starting out card games for the first time. Above all else, remember that Yu-Gi-Oh! is still just a game. That last sentence right there is very, very important. I've met so many weirdos in this community. <laughs> have fun with it. That, that is, that's it, guys. That is it. Like, just have fun with it. It's a game. Go spend time with your friends. Go, you know, look through uh, cards and organize them and, and learn new cards and stuff and, and watch the show. Go, you know, do all that stuff. It's a shame that a lot of that is lost in this community. You know, it has been lost in this community over the years. And I guess another piece of advice here would be um, going back to this, buying in bulk. Another thing you could do is buy singles um, instead of buying uh, um, boxes, um, you know, from Walmart or you know wherever your local card shop or whatever. I know that's a, a trend on uh, YouTube to you know do the, uh, I guess, uh, you know, sealed only challenge and stuff. And that's that's fun, that's cool and all. But you're gonna spend a lot of money doing, it, <laughs> you know, and uh, you might not necessarily uh, get the cards you want, and you're definitely not gonna get the specific cards you want as fast as you'd want them. Because if you're, you know, buying <laughs> like packs instead of just buying singles, like the one card you want, and you know, what I'm getting at is you can buy like five different packs of a set and not pull the one card you want, or like several boxes of a set even, not pull the one card you want if it's a hard card to pull, like a secret rare, for example. Um, but then you can have that card 
in a couple of days if you just went to TCG Player and ordered it. So, uh, buy singles, um, singles, uh, you know, and especially buy singles from uh, smaller, uh, your, your local, you know, card shop if you can. Another piece of advice when it comes to uh, trading cards uh, with people is to pay attention to what's meta or what, what might be useful for you in the future. Uh, for example, uh, when Ash first came out, it might have been, I don't remember how much it was when it first came out, but I know it ended up being like $100 a piece or whatever, right? Stuff like that, it would be uh, really good for you to have that intuition to uh, be able to read it and know to hang on to it, knowing that it's going to go up in value. That comes um, in time, and it comes with practice, but also feel free to price check on TCG Player, see see what the trends are. You know, that's what uh, John Moore is always doing. Uh, what's good, YouTube? <laughs> you know, that's, that's what he's always doing is keeping up with card trends, card prices. It's basically what he it's, it, does. He do anything else on his channel? I guess sometimes I don't know. Like every time I see see an upload from him, it's just market watching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you could always check those um, so you don't get bamboozled out of a card that you might need in the near future or might. Um, be uh, good in a format to come and I guess that's another piece of advice uh, you can even look to the OCG this doesn't hold true every single format every single time it doesn't hold true but you can look to the OCG to see what new decks have come out over there you look to the OCG uh, for what cards are being played and what cards haven't been reprinted pick them up so that uh, when the deck arrives in the states you're ahead of the curve price you know value of the card goes up because people want it hasn't been reprinted you get it, you get it, supply and demand. And uh, I guess that's gonna be uh, all my tips uh, for you guys. Um, just be, be nice to each other, have fun, uh, be respectful towards each other, don't try to rip each other off, um, because there's uh, that's something that can kill the game, is uh, uh, taking using all of this knowledge to take advantage of younger players. You should teach younger players this stuff. You should never, you know, take advantage of young, younger players. I've seen, like, I've seen people, I've seen people talk about, like, all these stories in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Sin series, you know, like the Yu-Gi-Oh! Confession series that I have, I see it, you know, all the time now, <laughs> you know, that uh, now that I've started that series, oh my god. Gosh, just these horror stories, just terrible stories of, uh, of ripping off kids and stuff. Like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Teach them these tricks. Make sure that they become good players so we can get some new blood in the game. Because if we aren't getting new players in and we're just the same old grouchy man children... <laughs> You know, the games are gonna die. So that's, uh, that's uh, having fun, like it says on this next page. Have fun with it. That is very, very, very important, guys. <laughs> very important. My very last piece of advice when it comes to getting into Yu Gi Oh! Uh, besides buying bulk so that you have a lot of uh, cards and a big variety of cards to choose from and have uh, um, a collection of cards for any uh, future potential formats or, you know, any past format that you might want to get, you know, learn and get into and play, is to watch Yu Gi Tube. And I know that's like, oh, you just want us to watch you and make you money <laughs> well, don't necessarily just watch me I mean especially because of what I'm about to say if you want to learn the game guys all right uh, well, obviously play you know go on dueling book or you know EDO pro whatever and play that's get, go head first and learn another way though is to watch Yu-Gi-Oh videos uh, watch people play watch people talk about formats best cards uh, watch market watch watch tr what's what's trending all that stuff uh, stay informed if you're gonna get into this game guys because no matter what I say and how much I preach there's still gonna be people out there like I was just talking about ready to rip off kids and just be weird and sad so yeah feel free to dick slap the like button for your boy here you know trolling those guys make sure that they're not as Abundance they used to be, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, yeah, dick slap the like button. That's the most important piece of advice. Like, why didn't I say that to begin with? Just dick slap the like button and subscribe. Duh, duh. <laughs> for real though, I hope this was helpful for you, and uh, I hope that you guys uh, learned a thing or two, or at the bare minimum, I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, looking at this old piece of Yu-Gi-Oh history because I know I like to look at it. It's it's cool. These magazines are so cool. Dick slap. I didn't forget. Dick slap the like button. <laughs>